everybody and thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Meredith Fox and this is another installment in my Millionaire series where I educate women and girls to have financial aim, awareness, information, and management skills. Today's topic is emergency funds and let's get right into it. Okay, so emergency funds, rainy day funds, squirrel funds, all kind of the same idea, but we're talking about an emergency fund today. I'm going to start off with a statistic from the Vanguard website, which is 56% of Americans don't have enough cash to cover three months of expenses. And I've got a question for you. Can you cover three months of expenses if you lost your job? if you fell sick and couldn't work? I can, but that was through diligence, patience, and hard work. And I'm here to help you learn how to do it as well. That was like way too structured for me. <laughs> Anyways, so the definition of an emergency fund is a cash reserve of three to six months of expenses. So if you decide that you need six months of expenses saved and every six months you spend $15,000, which is inclusive of your rent, groceries, insurance, um, pet food, pet visit, uh, vet visits, student loan payments, car payments, etc., that, that is $15,000, then you need $15,000 in your emergency fund. So the purpose of an emergency fund is for true emergencies. And I know, I know, I know you might be having a wardrobe emergency, a shoe emergency, a she just got that and I want that emergency, a Jeffree Star just dropped a new collab emergency, but those are not the emergencies we're talking about today, honey. The emergencies that we're talking about today are car problems, medical bills, your heater went out and it's winter, your AC went out and it's summer, a pet emergency, urgent travel because a family member passed away or is extremely sick. Um, if you have an insurance emergency, so let's say your house floods, but you have insurance, you can use your emergency fund to cover that gap until insurance actually does pay out. But the biggest reason why you need an emergency fund is for job loss. That is the number one reason why you should have an emergency fund is if tomorrow you lose your job, what are you gonna do? And 56% of Americans don't know what they would do for three months. Um, so what is not an emergency? Not emergencies are Christmas, birthdays, spur of the moment travel, somebody just launched new merch and you won it all. <sighs> Those are not emergencies. So a true emergency, you need to answer three questions and all three answers need to be yas, bitch. And those are, is it unexpected? Is it necessary? And is it urgent? If the expense meets all three of those criteria, then yes, it is an emergency. And you can go ahead and use your emergency fund. So now let's get into the risk of an emergency fund. So not having an emergency fund obviously is going to have intense stress because you'll have what if, what if, what if. And most problems in marriages, you know, the number one reason, one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial problems. Um, a lot of depression can come from stress with money. So just having that chunk of money sitting there and you know that you can use that for if an emergency pops up, that is such complete relief of mind, such complete relief of mind. Uh, other risks obviously are homelessness, hungry, losing your house, or one bad event makes you start completely over completely over. The benefit of having a emergency fund, an emergency fund, is 
less stress, obviously. I sleep so much better. Ever since I had my emergency fund maxed out, I sleep so much better at night, you guys. Like literally so much better at night. It teaches you how to have money and not spend it. So many people, as soon as they have money in their account, they think, I've got $20, I can spend that $20, I need to spend that $20. But listen, you don't need to spend that $20, okay? You need to save that $20 hairs. Um, and it also keeps us from making bad financial decisions, and those bad financial decisions are bad debt. So if an emergency happens and you have cash to pay it off, you don't have to put it on a credit card. So that saves you from having bad consumer debt. And, or, or you don't have to take out a loan. Yeah, you know, like emergency funds, like super beneficial, super like, super great. Yeah. So now you're probably thinking, how the heck am I going to build an emergency fund? Well, it's going to take time, it's going to take patience, and it's going to take diligence, honey. I would recommend saving at least 10% of every single paycheck into a savings account, more if you can, and save until you have what you determine that you need, which we'll get into that in uh, one more thing. So let me get into what my approach to an emergency fund is. So my approach for an emergency fund is a true emergency. And for that, it would mean job loss. Right now, it would also mean if I had a huge medical emergency. And it would also mean right now if I needed a different car since I do not have enough saved in my car savings for a new car yet. So um, for my cat, I have a savings account. For a new car slash car maintenance, I have a savings account. And if I owned a home, I would have a, like a home maintenance account and then I have my emergency fund. So what I would do if my cat needed like four grand worth of surgery or something, I don't, he doesn't have $4,000 in his savings account right now, but I would take whatever was in his savings account, pair it with my emergency fund and that's what I would use. And then I would refresh, I would um, keep contributing back to my emergency fund and then start replenishing my cat savings um, and every single month from my paycheck I have cash going to my kitty my car <laughs> my kitty my car my well I don't have home maintenance but I would if I did and my emergency fund and that's kind of how I allocate so my emergency fund is a true emergency fund but you can um, use your emergency fund for, you know, if you have like cat problems or dog problems or anything like that and just kind of up that amount a little bit more. Okay, so now other considerations. You're 23, you just graduated college, you have a shit ton of student loan debt. Thanks, Obama. I'm just kidding. You have a shit ton of student loan debt. You got your first job, you're killing it, you got a new car, you're great. You're like, Meredith, I don't need six months of living expenses. I'm healthy. I don't have a ton of living expenses. I wanna pay off my student loans. And I would say, you're right. You don't need six months of living expenses. You probably need about three months of living expenses. And maybe even less than that because you're healthy, you're young, you have no dependents. You don't have like a pet or anything. Um, and if you have parents that you can fall back on and they would help you in case of an emergency, you may only need like a couple grand and that's it. And that's okay. And then if an emergency does happen, you just kind of cash flow away from like your 401k or something into that or your parents help you or whatever. Now, if you are 35, you're in a high risk career, you have two kids, you have a mortgage, you have car payments, you've got two dogs, you um, have medical problems, okay? So once all of that stuff starts to happen in life, you might want eight to 12 months worth of living expenses, especially if you have kids or a high risk job. And by high risk job, I mean somewhere, I don't wanna like flip you guys off, high risk jobs, bitches. Um, but a high risk job, and that means it's a job that you could get hurt at, 
so you'll be out for a while, which I'm sure you have disability insurance too, but you could be out for a while. Or it's a high risk job in that you could get fired at any second. Like if you're a consultant or something and your contract is up and or they just don't want you there anymore, like bye. And homegirl or homeboy better have money and cash saved up. Especially like if a recession hits and you don't want to withdraw anything from the stock market because everything has gone down low, you got this bundle of cash that is saving your ass. Okay, so we went through definitions, purpose, risk, benefit, how to build one, my personal approach, other considerations. And the last, the last two things I want to share with you is that remember the cash in an emergency fund is losing time in the market. So you need to find that delicate balance between having the cash for emergencies that might occur and saving enough or investing enough in the stock market to build your net worth and your wealth. So those are two things to always think about when it comes to the amount of cash. And I personally, just as a mental safety net, probably have a little too much cash for like my age, my health, my one dependent, my cat. Um, but for me, because I can't rely on my parents because all these other factors, I like having more cash, um, which is, I mean, it's not a ton more, but it's still, um, it, it gives you more security. And that security has benefits too. And I know saving money isn't always easy, but it's so, so, so much less painful than any of the alternatives and that stress that it puts on your body. Ease of mind over stress every single time. Okay, you guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Continue to grow those emergency funds. Comment down below if you have any questions. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.